My friends, welcome back to Dirty B playing Virtue's Last Reward. So, we're here at the initial choice between chromatic doors, and I'm gonna go down the path, the middle path on the uh, flowchart now that I haven't gone through before, by going through the yellow door with 10 Miyoji. I'm thinking we'll go through the yellow door with Tamiyoji. Also, I'm really curious about Tamiyoji in a lot of ways, like his whole relationship with Quark, the things he seemed to know that seemed to convince Clover that Luna had killed Alice, which does seem very likely, but I'm not going to go ahead and say, yeah, no, that happened. Because a lot of times when I've done that, these games seem to subvert that kind of stuff. Set up those things so you, you think that stuff and then subvert it under this. Or at least I feel like I remember that happening, but what's funny is right now I can't really remember a scenario in which that actually happened. And I'm starting to realize I do that a lot. I make assumptions because it makes sense, but like that not because it actually happened. Um, it's it's something y'all we all got to be careful about, I think, and like being human in general. But because I think we all do that a lot, and that it can be very detrimental. But regardless... Sure. Fine. That means Dio and I will go with Alice. And we'll be going through the magenta door. All right, then. Better than getting stuck with that crusty old farm, <laughs> I guess. Dio really has it in for Tenmyoji in specific. I wonder if that alludes to something personal. It might literally just be some kind of tension between their personalities, but... I feel like it might mean that they actually know each other or something. Or that he remembers him and hates him for some reason. Dio remembers Tamiyoji, I mean. But yeah, I feel like, I don't know what it is, it might literally just be a personality thing. But there has to be a reason that Dio is so hell-bent on taking shots at Tamiyoji. So, Clover, Luna, and I will be going through the Cyan door. I don't get to go with Alice? This is the second time this has happened. I feel like Clover gets attached to a specific person very easily. I don't know what the fuck happened to Snake, but she was very protective of Snake in, um, earlier, and now it's Alice. And I really wonder what the hell happened to Snake. Again, my theory that K is Snake still stands, because K's identity is obviously very important. There's the whole plot point of the little key that fits in the back of his helmet. And I have I have been through three endings, I think, now. And none of them have... The last one came close, but none of them have actually revealed him. But now I know, I just realized, that going through Gollum Bay is the way to reveal Kay's identity. So... Hmm. See, now that I know that, I sort of want to see about going through there in a different way. Maybe I could actually do that here. Either way. I'll try and stay out of the way. I don't really mind you, but the K guy seems really suspicious. You know, it would be really fucking heartbreaking if he was Snake. Because Clover hasn't made a peep about Snake, even though she is, was obviously very close to him and it was very cute in the first game, so... I really wonder if maybe he died or something, or she thought he did. Maybe he did, but that's him somehow, because this is fucking an Ushikoshi game. Or, if, like, she has some reason to believe, regardless of being alive or not, that Snake would not be here. So, she wouldn't have any, like, thing to assume that Snake, that that's Snake. But, like I've touched on before, Pei's demeanor and his smarts and his deduction are very snake like, so I have a feeling it's him. Plus, Snake being in disguise is also a thing that happened in the first game. So I have a feeling it is him. But Clover may not remember him for some reason, or would think that he's not here, or that he wouldn't be the guy in that suit. I really wonder, man. But, like, it's kind of tragic if that is Snake, like I think he is, that Clover is so suspicious of him, you know? We're all meeting one another for the first time. Nah, nope. I don't think so, man. I really don't fucking think so anymore. And, and granted, that was never really true, at least in, obviously, Clover and Alice's case. And also, obviously, in Tenmyoji and Quark's case. But also, I feel like Luna had some motive for murder, so she knew them. She knew someone. She knew the old lady, maybe. 
I really want to know, know who Luna was. What if she worked in this facility and so she's like one of the people being targeted by whoever Zero is? Similarly to how one of the main goals of the first Nunnery game was, or the second, I guess you could say. The one that happened during 999, one of the goals of it was to kill the people responsible, or punish them at least. But yeah, like, I wonder if Luna worked here and so she's trying to cover everything up and escape, and maybe she woke up with the old lady who knew about everything or was another one of the people there, and so I have a feeling that A, Luna isn't what she seems, like, you know, June. She loved Junpei, but she was willing to put him through, possibly dying in many different ways, and she probably realized all that too, considering the whole morphogenetic fields thing, right? And she risked all of that and also just put them all through a lot of suffering anyway. But at the same time, it was to reverse it, right? So there's a lot that can be argued about June's case, and I also don't think all the details are out there yet. Like, there are definitely some things that Chikoshi is probably only going to reveal in the third game about the first game. I really think so. But regardless, and maybe not everything. Aren't we equally suspicious? That is also true. But, again, like, we're, not everyone is meeting one another for the first time. And I think that maybe he lost all his memories of Clover, because he doesn't remember shit about himself, right? So that's another reason why I think he's Snake. Hey, I'm nothing like you. That's oof again if he's Snake, that is the most oof ass thing. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. And yeah, I think you aren't doing anything like him. I think you're actually malicious. You certainly can be. Because you literally have murderous tendencies. We've seen that twice, dude. I don't think K has that, except well. I think he did kill Dio in that last time, but yeah. All I know is, ugh, I don't know. I do not know what the hell's up with anyone here. I think you're, I think that Ujikoshi's intent, at least, was to make none of this clear until the end. Because, like with 999, there's probably going to be some big reveal in the true ending, which there's a lot more endings to get to before that one. Nine, eight, seven. We need to go. The doors are closing. <laughs> Come on, guys. Oof. Three, two. One, zero, chromatic doors closing. I wonder what that green field thing is that's moving up and down. Is that the elevator? I'm not sure what that's supposed to, what that shot is supposed to be, even after seeing it so many times. Okay, the medical room, that's what this one is. And so now we're gonna actually explore it. So this is the... infirmary? Looks like it. That's what it said on the door, after all. <laughs> what the hell? Why is there an infirmary right next to a warehouse? Well, it's probably here if any of the workers get sick or hurt. But we are also aware that this ain't just no warehouse, bro. This is a... This is a science facility where they were doing some hmm-ass shit. <laughs> what workers? <laughs> uh, did you see the size of that place? A little big to just be somebody's garage. Very true. <laughs> then you're saying people work here? I think work duh past tense is the true thing here. Maybe not now, but judging from the lack of dust, someone was here until recently. <laughs> In fact, in a way, this very well actually could be, like, the actual first Nonary game. Like, literally, we could be like the kids. Like, literally, we as in Sigma and the other nine here could be like the people that were put through the first Nonary game that Ace designed. And speaking of Ace, I just realized something. Luna seems to be this game's Ace as far as role. She has a lot of motives to kill, and Zero is using them against her here. That seems to be what's going on here, just like with Ace in, in uh, 999. Think it'll open? No way. How can you be so sure? Just look at it. You see that thing next to the door? What's it say? Lock. <laughs> no dice. It's not moving. 
Are you blind? It says lock right there. <laughs> He's got a point, Sigma. Yeah, yeah, I just thought, you know, maybe I could force it open. Right. Let's have a look around, okay? Yeah, good idea. Maybe there's one of those card keys around here somewhere. Well, let's get started. Hell yeah. Let's play the video game. I feel like that glitched at the... I think that's supposed to mean something, like this ain't actually reality in a way. Okay, this place has got some sinister ass music. And again, I love the music of these games, because it's weird and really fucking catchy at the same time. It always invokes feelings of this is really fucked up, this is a really fucked up situation, feelings of anxiety. But at the same time, it manages to be really good background, it really just feels like this is the right music for doing the puzzles. But at the same time, it's like, hey, the situation's fucked to shit. And it's it's perfect for this game because of that. And it's, and it's so interesting and unique and obviously well-crafted. I love the music of these games for a lot of reasons. And I keep reiterating them because of how fucking true they are. Like, the more that I play these games, the more I feel like this is true. And I feel like... Especially in the music department, they definitely learned a lot from the first game, because I think that the music in this game is better. But it serves the exact same purpose, even though the music in the first game is fucking amazing. So far, I feel like this game's music is better. But I've realized that oftentimes, I tend to be overwhelmed with, this is new, shiny, and I like it. And then later on, I realize that I might like, you know, different ones better than I thought at first. So that might prove true here, but I don't know. For the moment, hell yeah. It's so creative. I can't get over that part. The music is really not generic at all, ever. And I, that's hard to fucking pull off with music. Pops for just that, but also just like the fact that it's good-ass music to begin with, of course. All right, what's up with this desk? Little coin-like thing. It looks like a key. An odd key. It's uh, definitely some kind of key, though. Something to fit somewhere. I'm calling that. What's this? It's a very odd object. A coin? Never seen a coin with a bump like that on it before. Yeah, I guess he's referring to the... What looks like a... Very much like a key-like extremity there. Or just something that fits into something else. Yeah. Think maybe it's part of something else? The bump might plug into something or hook into a notch. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Notebook. It's a notebook. Maybe there's something important here. No, I flipped through it earlier. All the pages are blank. Interesting. Huh. The very horror gamey, like, duh, sounds, and also just like the fucking beat there. There's nothing on the screen. That's because it isn't turned on. Hmm, so it looks like we gotta turn it on somehow. What about this big red button? This looks like a power button. Try pushing it. Do I have to push it? Because <laughs> it could explode or something. Because, you know, you've gotta always make sure that I don't die, but if you die, that doesn't fucking matter. Uh, fine, fine, fine. Well, it might be a trap or something. That makes me want to push it even less. Fine, I'll push it then. Okay. <laughs> no, I'll do it. Ah, fine. I'll just need to push it, right? <laughs> Please do. Motherfucking... <laughs> Poor Sigma. He's the fucking scapegoat. The screen is white. Handheld scan. Okay, now that we've got the power on, what are we supposed to scan? How about that square hole in the shoot? Part that's been cut out. Sure, why not? Examining the bed sheet will activate the scanner so that you can read the hidden letters. Use that information to enter the five-digit password, and then press the check button. But there's got to be a hint about that somewhere, right? So for now, I won't do this. Huh, this seems weird. See, when I scan part of the bed, a letter shows up. There's probably a bunch of metal plates or something in the mattress. Do you think the scanner's just reading the letters that? letters carved into them? Maybe. My point is, you're not gonna get anywhere doing that. You need clues. Yep. So I was thinking, okay, that one wasn't as your stupid Sigma as a lot of the others. I'm glad I actually read that one. It's helpful. What the heck is this? And I think I should just, like, stop skipping those just because I don't like feeling Sigma's embarrassment. Let's be entirely honest. That's why I skip those. Just because Sigma reminds me a lot of myself because of how he bumbles through things that everyone else seems to kind of know better than him. Or at least that's the vibe. And that's a lot of my life. Ugh. It says AED. It's an AED, just like it says. Okay, what's an AED? It 
stands for adult erotic... If there isn't an actual, like, fucking hospital porno named that, I will be very surprised. I'm kidding. It stands for Automated External Defibrillator. You use it to try and restart somebody's heart if they go into cardiac arrest. It uses electricity. Hmm. Do you think we can take it out? Probably, but what good's it gonna do you? If your heart stopped, sure, it might be useful, but right now, I don't think so. I hope no one's heart stops, but well, that's certainly a very common scenario here. Because death is just part of these games, because fuck that. Here's another part of this thing. Worn out key. Or, or at least I imagine so. Maybe not. Wait! Hmm. It's a worn out key. Probably a log that fits it somewhere. I doubt it, but part of me feels like I should at least try this. Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh my god, this is a laser gun, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Sigma. I don't think it's quite that. No, it's an injection gun. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's the thing that she used to put Quark to sleep, I think. Yeah. I think also Alice. No, it's an injection gun. Pretty much what it says on the tin. It's a gun-shaped thing that gives injections. Should we take it with us? Nah. It'll just ignite the fires of war. <laughs> Besides, all it's got in it is some saline solution. You can inject someone with it if you want, but it won't do anything. Hmm. Why would you inject someone with salt? What's the point of doing that? It's a dangerous thing you got there. You know the whole point of that thing is to cut through flesh. Just be careful with it. Oh god, man, if Luna got a hold of that thing, she'd know how to use it, too. You know what I mean, man? There's a lot of things pointing to Luna being murder, 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 murder. But, you know. I've already got someone like that, and her name's Clover. Did she at least tried to kill Luna or strangle her or something? I really don't know what the hell happened to Luna. And I'm sure that's an important plot point that will, once again, only really be unraveled on the at the end. Which, because she's good at doing that, at least for me, in my brain, so far. But perhaps I'll get more savvy about that kind of thing as we play, as I play these games and be able to see that stuff more. I think I'm already a little bit better at that, but regardless. There are a bunch of bottles of medicine here. I've never heard of any of these names. Okay, it looks like it's just all... Oh! This thing is full of medicine. None of them have labels, though. I don't have any idea what's in them. Maybe we should just pick some and take them? No, that's a recipe for death, dude. Or at least some oof-ass side effects. No, it's dangerous to mess with medicine, you don't understand. So we'd be committing med a medicine. Uchikoshi, stop with the goddamn puns. I know you're only gonna get worse. In fact, I literally heard that every game you make has more puns in it. So I'm bracing myself. But goddamn it. Sadly, Sigma's joke was critically trepant. I don't get that one, but that's gotta be some other medical pun. And God, they work so well together because they they both do horrible puns every half second. And she's actually worse about it. She's as bad as Junpei in the first game. I do have to give credit to Sigma in that he doesn't do it as much as Junpei did in the first game. But it's okay because Uchikoshi has five in order to write that shit. God damn it. <laughs> I'm not very generous with other peop other people, so. are you? I don't get it. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, she, she's very quick to condemn him for puns, but she makes him work. <laughs> that's true. What's this? It says it say. Whoops, that's a typo. Cur tubocurine on the label. Tubocurine, isn't that? Yeah, the muscle relaxant in our bracelets. I bet it was also made by Ace's company, too. I almost guarantee you that. Jar containing white powder. Interesting how we were able to pick this one up. A medicine jar. It's full of cocaine. No, it's full of white powder. None of these, they're, yeah. And the closer something is to the bottom of the screen, the less likely it seems to be. Like something you'll generally be able to actually do anything with. However, these buttons are important. 
There are three buttons on this drawer. Well, there's no handle, so I'm guessing those buttons are how we get it open. The thing over each one of them looks like some kind of counter. So that means... Oh. There's little icons that looks like the types... There's a lot of interesting little typos here, whoops. Because that should be look like the types of medicine on the buttons, right? A blue capsule, a yellow powder, and a red liquid. Have you seen those anywhere before? Hmm. I think there's more around the room for this. I think it opens that. Oh, never mind. That's where the safe is. I'm not even gonna activate that until we've got it. And ha, another tablet like the one in the Golem Bay. What's this? Some sort of clipboard? There's a memory card on here. Okay, yeah, no, it's just a... It's, it has a yellow thing. I have a really It's like a memory card. What's on it? Is there anything around here that might be able to read it? Hmm. And a scrap of paper. What's this drawing supposed to be? We found a note with shapes on it. You can view it by visiting the archive. Paper with a drawing on it. B A. This was supposed to watch wash something with B and A. Hmm. And then there's probably some kind of code on a shirt or something. Oh, I hold on. We've also definitely got a. I think almost. The board not gonna be clipped. It must be the board. God damn it. Uh. A wash basin. It's empty. The top level of the cart. There's a wash basin on there. Oh! Ah, uh, there was- I knew there was at least something else. Huh. Look at all these blocks. The cupboard's gonna keep us from grabbing them, though. There are three empty spots. Five times five minus three is twenty-two blocks. I can see four different icons. There's the blue ca- okay, so this must relate to that unlocking. There's the blue capsule, the yellow powder, the red liquid, and the green tablet. Hey, yeah, check this out. There's a couple of keyholes on the bottom corners. Ah! Not sure what this thing is, but I'm guessing we'll need to unlock those keyholes before we can get much out of it. Awesome, I unlocked it. Okay, looks like we need a different key for that one, don't we? This isn't a key, right? Hmm. Where does that go? I think we need another key. What's this? It's a pretty big screen, so it's showing anything, though. There's some arrows down here. Wait a minute. There's a slot on the side of the screen for the memory card in it. I saw something like that in the AB room. It was quite the same size, though. So I think this is a card reader. Okay. Yep. Conformed. All right. Give me a clue, please. I think we're supposed to put a memory card in here. Try it out. Come on, you don't have to tell me what to do. I know what's up. A equals white powder and medicine bottle. B equals water. Thank you! I don't even need to read that, and I won't. Because it's just going to be fluff dialogue. I love Uchikoshi's fluff dialogue sometimes, but after painstakingly getting all the fluff dialogue in the first game, it's not very satisfying. A lot of it's just puns and dumb jokes. A lot of which aren't really my type of humor, so... I don't... In, I don't tend to really like trying to get all the fluff dialogue anymore. So, the white powder... I already have half of the thing I need to wash whatever the fuck I need to wash and B equals water but where do we get water we gotta have somewhere to get water in here right ah uh, but is there I have a wait hold on what if I empty the jar oh wait hold on wait maybe there's something to wash here oh maybe this is what also oh, I'd never looked at the beds before hold on there's a piece of fabric sewn in here it's the same material as the bed sheets. So if someone attached a sheet to the sheet? I guess so. Why would someone do that? I don't know. That's the mouse. He's a rabbit. What? I do not get that joke. That's gotta be some kind of reference though. There's a sewn sheet into the sheet. If I had something sharp, I could probably cut it out. Here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. 
Scalpel might do the trick here. Yep, and it's dirty. That's what I need to wash. What the hell? This thing's filthy. It's like something's been written on it, but we can't read it like this. Yeah. What's this, by the by? That's something important. I had a feeling I was missing pieces and bits and things. Metal stuff. It is a key, but not a whole key. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then what I think I need to do after that is put the white powder in the wash basin and then it'll give me the empty jar that I've put water in that and then put that in there. We'll see. Water from that sink over there, we will see about that. But foist, let's unlock this. Well, that went in easy enough. Whoa, what the hell just happened? The whole thing just moved out from the wall a couple inches. Can you pull it out? What do you mean, pull it out? Hmm. Frame? Uh, yeah, it looks like I can pull the case out. Well, let's have a look at it then. Sure. Move the red, green, and blue blocks to the squares that correspond to their colors. We can move the three blocks up and down as well as sideways by using the directional buttons. Okay. Oh, directional button. I see. Okay. I see now. Okay, this is similar to one of the puzzles. I feel like it also might have been... There might have been something like this in this game, too. But I definitely remember one from the first game. Okay, there's the green one. That's how you put the green one. Oh, there's the blue one. Wait a minute. Hmm. I can get them all individually into their things, but I need to get them all, you know, in there together. Huh. Big old dirty. How do I get this one to go down without? Is there a way to maybe switch them, like the red and blue ones? Because I feel like if I can do that. What if we not? Nope. I don't know how the fuck I did that. <laughs> Me neither. Whoops. Okay. No, it was not a piece of cake. I don't know what you're talking about. Either way, thanks for the help, Dad. I don't know how- In the end, I keep doing that. I try to figure them out, and then I end up bullshitting them instead while I'm trying to figure them out. I think you helped me figure out something, but I think subconsciously. Yes, that was a passable performance, but I don't know about that. It took a long time. Shoutouts to my dad for helping me do that poozle. Although, like, he, he tried to help me, help me, but as you heard there, I, what I actually did was I did it on my own on accident. <laughs> My dad gets really into puzzles, so it's happened several times now while I've been Let's playing these games. He'll come in here because he needs to use my bathroom. So he'll come through here and he'll see me playing, and then he'll be really interested in the puzzle that I'm doing, and then he'll help me through it. I love it, man. It's wonderful father-son bonding. We're fucking nerds together, and I love it. Anyway, why do we get the feeling your heart wasn't in that? Because <laughs> it never is. It's fine, dude. She's always messing with you, or have you not figured that out yet? I mean, granted, in this particular scenario, you actually haven't been around her very much yet. Really? Just for one other escape room, and then, you know, the point between that and this point. So I guess, at least from what you remember... You wouldn't know much about it. Except for that one time that she said thank you while hugging you, which was cute. I really wonder what the hell that whole context is about, though. I hope we'll see that scene later. I have a feeling we will. Hey, did you guys see this? <laughs> Moving those blocks seems to have filled in the empty spaces in the, on the front. Oh, yeah. It's a 5x5 five five grid covered entirely by blocks. Each of the blocks has one of these medicine icons on it. And see, now we can ha we have those three that we're missing, so we can actually count them all. So, one, two, three, four, five blue. One, two, three, four, five yellow. That remains the same. And one, two, red, still okay, but there was the five blue. We needed to have those two extra. It's very satisfying to push those buttons for some reason. Check. Whoops! Uh, what did I fuck up? One, two... Three, four, five. Yes. One, two. Oh, I did miss a yellow block too. Three, four, five, six. Okay. That must be the actual solution. I didn't peep that six, the yellow one, the first time for some reason. There we go. Feels good, man. It really is satisfying to press those three buttons. 
Oh yeah! Man, if I had buttons like that in real life in any form, I'd just constantly just be... Oh, whoops. <laughs> I skipped through the dialogue trying to demonstrate a pressy button sound. Really funny, funny, funny. Okay, um... <clears throat> oh yeah! Open sesame! Well done, Sigma. There's something in here. At least Hemioji means it when he says well done. <laughs> you have found a note with colored numbers on it. Oh, uh, numbers, eh? You can view it by visiting the art chat. The numbers are... It's got to do with this puzzle here. However, before I do anything else, I'm going to pour that in here. Okay, basin you go. And yep, now I have the empty jar. And I don't even need extra hint dialogue in order to know that I now need to go over here. Where is that sink again? For some reason, it only let me get to it this way. Either that or there would be more tugging. If I have one big complaint about this game, it's that I think the system of the first game, moving between the different sections of the room by using, like, a big map, is better than it all being one room, but, like, having those weird scrolly sections where oftentimes you have no idea if it's actually stopping you or that you actually have more to scroll and see. It's definitely messed me up a few times. Anyone else have, have that, um, issue? I wonder. Okay, cool. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. Run the water. Oh, the jar in it? Gonna get some water with the empty jar, huh? Yep, I had a feeling you needed to do that. Yeah, pretty clever. Right? Didn't know if they'd call that clever. I think a three-year-old could come up with that plan. Just fine. Alright, now just get more of the water in. Now, hey, we've got bubbles. Nate, I just soak the stained fabric in this. Ah, hmm. It's nice and clean. It's completely different. Interesting. Get about the fabric bleach and the whole. Oh! 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 No wonder there's not squares there! Okay, I should have figured, I guess. You're... Ah-ha! Neat. Awesome. Looks like that did it. Hmm. Good work. The screen changed. <laughs> it's a very old man -y word. I'm sure that... You know what? What if I need to make a different word there, and then that's the other file password? Let's see. Huh? Wait a minute. You've seen it too? Yeah. There was something like this in the AB room. The symbols are all different, though. I take it you two saw one? Yeah. We used the password like this to open the safe in our AB room. You gotta write that down. No, that's cool. I can remember it. You gotta memorize it? Sure, no sweat. That's interesting. It's like the same time said. I got a pretty good memory. I feel like that's like literally a plot point. <laughs> Especially because Leo, he remembers things he should not. But so does Fi, that's obvious. Again, I think it's because she's a golem. I found the safe password to view it, now gate the past out in the archive. And I think the biggest hint to her being a golem is Zero is Zero Junior specifically going you know, specifically saying, you know, um specifically like saying that Fi knows more than she lets she specifically said that or something like that. He specifically called her out and said something like that. So that, to me, indicates that she's a golem, to me. And she's being forced to play the game for some reason. Either that or she's just being forced to play it and also play along with Zero. Regardless of if she's a golem or not. And that's also why she knows other stuff. That's also why she knows the stuff if she's not a golem. A golem. But either way, if someone in our nine people being a golem is not a plot point... I will be very fucking surprised. Because, like, the idea of robots that can look exactly like humans not being used to confuse us more in an Uchi Koshi game, there's... One of them's a golem. Just whom, though? Maybe more than one of them. You know what I mean? Uh, either way. If it's not Fi, I'll be surprised, but someone's a golem in this game, and if not, that will... I will be... I will wonder why he did the whole golem thing, because why else would you do that? Other than to to have all the uh, other plot points you can uncover in that last ending we did, but you know, not just that. But it's gotta be like someone's a golem in our group. 
In fact, I'm pretty sure that he was gonna say something like, See, right in the middle of you lot is one of us. I think he was gonna say something like that, but we'll see. I have a feeling you need to make another word. Crude? Does that do anything? Ah, it's a word though. I'm tempted to look up the one for this one, because like, even this is an earlier room, I am really stumped about even like the beginnings of figuring out how to get to the password here. Oh yeah, hold on. Speaking of file passwords, I just remembered I never read the last set. I'm gonna try to actually read them at the beginning of the next episode now. I think that's the best way to handle these. M Memento Mori. It's the ninth line ate the sun. It appears to have been written in some sort of weird paint. Memento Mori is a Latin phrase that translates roughly to remember death, mortality. Ninth clearly refers to ninth, but seems to have been spelled wrong, like on purpose. Why? Perhaps it's an anagram, like the words on the wall on, on, in the floor of a warehouse. If it is, what does this one mean? The hourglass displayed in the background is actually a four-second timer. It doesn't have much practical use, except maybe for really important and patient people. If you're at a restaurant waiting for your food to come out, for instance, Hey, how long are you gonna make me wait? I've already flipped this hourglass a hundred times. Technically, a hundred times only be 400 seconds, which is six minutes and 40 seconds. But saying a hundred times is much more dramatic and therefore much more likely to get a desirable response from the way it's That's okay, so. Or be graffiti, hourglass. The names are really important for the context of a lot of these, so like, I wanna make damn sure that yeah, I read them in between instead of just scrolling through them. I really wish the name was displayed at the top of each of them, but they are Gentle points. These are a measure of how much of a gentleman you are. I- this sounds like the most British-ass thing. Is this a thing, British people? Please, I need to know. UK people, England people, whatever you call- Like, I really want- like, I, apparently there's a difference between all three. What is it? I think- excuse me? I might need to watch that video I saw that was titled something like that. Just to, like, understand. Somewhere deep in the United Kingdom is an organization that tracks all gentlemen, determining their caliber based off an ancient and... It should be based on... Based off is just how a lot of people say that now, but it should be based on... Ancient and Byzantine collection of rules and guidelines. Every year during the spring, a representative of this organization conducts a cursory investigation of each member's behavior, or at least appears to. Hmm. And then awards gentle points based on what they saw. The following formula is used. Old ladies escorted across the street times top hats owned, times puzzles solved, times money given to gentle- oh my god. Gentleman tracking organization. Wait, what? Is this- nah. Is this real at all or is it just literally a- Okay. The weirdness of these, a lot of these should be- and some of them are actually enlightening about the actual game. But so many of these are just like elaborate jokes. It's like when Ushikoshi was absolutely smashed, he wrote a lot of these because just for extra flavor and fluff and just like things to make the player go, what the fuck is really what most of these seem to be. Knife. A small survival knife. It has myrmidons stamped into the flat of the blade. Blade length 150 millimeters, base weight 30 millimeters. Base thickness, thir three millimeters. There's blood on it, but whose blood? I'm guessing old ladies slash, and also Alice's. Definitely at least Alice's, obviously, but I think also the old lady. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think both of them at this point, obviously, but maybe someone else's. Hmm. Seven, um, again, I wanted to scroll through them, but I want the titles, so I have to do this. Four, way, four B hallway locks. Several of the hallways on floor B use special locks indicated on the map by arrows. On the far side of each arrow is a lever. Pulling these levers will unlock the locks. Once this had been done, you can explore the entire area. Principle of causality. The law of cause and effect. Specifically that a cause must precede every effect. At the quantum level, however, things aren't quite as immutable. The principle of quantum superposition holds that any physical system, such as an electron, exists at least partially in all of its theoretical states or configurations, but when measured gives a result corresponding to only one of them. A classic example of this is the double slit experiment, where light appears to behave as both a wave and a particle. 
One of the interesting implications of this is that, in a sense, you are influencing the past, which is a big theme of this game, oh boy! In fact, I wonder if a lot of these scientific theories basically inspired this game in the most fundamental way for Uchikoshi. I have a feeling that that is the case. The story and the mechanisms used to tell it, basically, everything. By absorbing a system, you are defining the cause of an effect you witness, and in a way altering the past. Normally, I would comment here that the quantum level is where shit gets real, son. But given the nature of this phenomenon, it seems like it would be more accurate to say that the quantum level is where shit gets unreal. Like this fucking game story. See? Like I said... Nox's Ten Commandments. Ronald Knox, and by the way, this is funny. When I read this earlier, I was like, yeah, I wish Koshi read these and then made sure not to follow them. And just listen to me read them out, because, yeah, I think for anyone that's aware of even just 999 and the whole story of that game, he specifically doesn't follow this because he can. Um, Uchikoshi, I mean. Ronald Knox. Ronald Knox, a mystery writer from the UK, published the following as his rules for writing mystery novel. Actually, well, well, he follows some of them to the T, but then others he just completely ignores. I love it. Listen, like, look, like, let's just, like, use 999 as an example, because that's the game I can spoil. Uh, the criminal must be mentioned early on. That, that definitely happened in 999. Ace. Ace was... Ace actually killed a dude pretty much first thing, uh, as we learn later, just in a way that was, that very cleverly absolved him of guilt. All supernatural or preternatural agencies are ruled out, except, well, in this game, there's definitely the supernatural agency, dude. Like, fucking, wait, I'm not sure what preternatural actually means, and by agencies, does that mean, like, some kind of, like, organization that is supernatural, or literally just supernatural forces. Hmm. But I think that, like, in this game, the supernatural's gotta be real in some way. Or at least, like, the idea, I think, is science fiction that is taken to a rather supernatural extent. But it might not actually... Uchikoshi might not actually, like, think he's writing fantasy at all, but... It's very high sci-fi, to a degree, but it's also grounded in other ways, it's interesting. And it's obviously based on a lot of real science, so there's that. No more than one secret room or passage. No hitherto undiscovered posi- No hitherto undiscovered poisons may be used. One secret room or pa- I feel like there's several in the first game, so again. Uh, no hitherto undiscovered poisons may be used nor any appliance which will need long scientific explanation. Oh god. See, this is this is the main thing that made me uh, make my joke that I did before I started reading these, of like, because he doesn't follow these, because literally long scientific explanations are his bread and fucking butter. Uh, and then also, I don't know if the poisons thing is true about his stuff either. No one with extra sensory- this, this again, this also is like, really? It's so funny that this is here, because no one with extrasensory perception or similar powers can appear. At you! <coughs> like, fucking, he deliberately ignored that one. This is really funny. Because he obviously follows some of these. Because I also think that Luna is the killer here. For the original one, anyway. And then Clover killed her, or tried to. But then it might actually have been Dio that killed her, killed her. I don't know, man. But she might have thought she killed her, but Dio actually did some help. It might all be true. No accident must ever help the detective, nor must he ever have an unaccountable intuition, which proves to be right. Again, the whole thing about June and Junpei's connection is literally that. The detective must not commit the crime. I guarantee you at some point, Uchikoshi's gonna pull that out of his ass. The detective must declare any rules he may dis- any The detective must declare any clues he may discover. And see, there's definitely some omitting information and even lying going on in the original game, so he doesn't- In 999, so Uchikoshi doesn't really follow that one either. The stupid friend of the detective, the Watson, must conceal nothing from the reader. Hmm. 
is there a Watt City character in these games? I really think that, honestly, you could almost call, like... Because, like, there isn't really a Watson here, because what he actually ends up having is a pretty smart female companion in these games, so far. He meaning the main character. So there was June in the first game, Dove. And then... There's Fi in this game. So there, there isn't really a Watson here. Twin brothers and doubles generally must not appear in the list. But yeah, that's a whole thing. Uh, it's just funny how it seems like Uchikoshi deliberately ignores some of those, like on purpose. Like he read those and was like, "Fuck that!" Or I can, I'm gonna make a really compelling mystery story that does not follow most of this, because that's literally what he did. So. At least for the first game. I don't know how much about that, that is true from this game, because I really feel like I've only scratched the surface. There's obviously a lot of endings I haven't touched. There's a lot more endings in this game. And I heard about that even before I played the game. But now I really understand the gravity of that. Really... Either way, now I'm going to look up the other password, or at least how to get to it. Okay, I have no fucking idea how you're supposed to figure this out on your own at all, but apparently you're supposed to type found in here. So I will figure out how to do that without looking up an exact solution that I always do when I do this. F. Oh, oh shit, I, I forget what the U was. Okay, the U's there, okay. F. O. U. N. D. There we go. How the hell are you supposed to figure that out? So I did it? Nice, good job. Since you figured it out. The screen's showing something, showing something again. Yep, Arino. Three, interesting. Three moons and three... Okay, never mind. That's not three the same thing. What? It's different now. The symbols changed and they moved around. Well, it's probably related to the save somehow. And remember this thing you did? Except, well, while well, remember. By remember it, he means put it in his mental fucking, like, actual fucking archive, so that the player doesn't have to remember it. So, let's do the file one first, and then the other one, because that triggers the whole, like, ending sequence thing, and it just makes chronological sense to me. So that means that I need to input the blue one first, and by the way, yay, blue, my favorite color. Really simple and easy to remember. It's just star, sun, sun, from left to right on the bottom. I saw a safe like this one in the AB room. Yeah, Sigma and I saw one just like it. So do you think it opens the same way? Try it and find out. Yep, Arino. Awesome, it opened. Ah, well done. Good work. Now, three moons, top left corner, top right corner, bottom right corner. Nice! Oh, looks like it'll open up with that other password, too. Seems like it. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. First, we've got... A map? It says Floor A. Yeah. We can take a close look at it later. There's still more stuff in there. Why don't you get the rest of it first? Right. Next, we've got a card. Two cards, actually. These must open the AB rooms. See? They've got Ambidex room right there. Yeah, you're probably right. Then we can use these to open the AB rooms. Yeah, but how are we supposed to get back to the warehouse? That's where all the AB rooms are. We can go back the way we came, but that does a lot. I think the answer to that is in the safe. See? Read this note. Here are a few more rules for you. Once you've opened the door, you can hop through it as much as you like. The chromatic doors are like that, too. Once you open them, I even carrot- I- Once you open them, I- Once you open them, even I carrot keep it from going in and out of them. Any color of bracelet can go through them, and as many people as you like. But, 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 you have to escape before you can take advantage of this free reign rule. Once you've activated a chromatic door and gone through into the puzzle beyond, it won't let you back until you've solved the puzzle. Interesting. So it's saying that once we get out of here, we'll be able to head back to the warehouse. Yeah. There's another piece of paper in here. It looks like... It looks like part of a newspaper. Why would someone put a newspaper in here? 
Radical six infection spreads. Cure continues to elude authorities. Oh, man. Insert COVID jokes here. I'm tired of making them. I think too many people have used them. This Radical Six virus continues to spread across the globe, globe like wildfire. Who has confirmed that the death toll is estimated to have passed 100,000 victims? Immediate quarantine of any infected patients is strongly advised. What the hell? What's this? What's Radical Six? Wait, quarantine? No way. Look, we can talk about this later. Right now, we need to get out of here as fast as we can. But forget it! Just do what I tell you to. Just do what I tell you to do. Yeah, I really feel like Fi has some kind of agenda. Where she's very adamant about not letting people go down certain th trains of thought and thus action. And I have a feeling it's because she's a golem and or she remembers or is able to recall from the mainframe because golem a lot of things about this that she's not really on. Last thing in the safe is probably the key. So we can finally get out of here? She's nodding. We found this key in the safe. It should open the exit. Let's go. Or she might literally be Zero Senior. I think she's smart enough to be, maybe. Thing keeps the door locked, so it's locked. Alright, here we go. Okay. Yep. Three, two, one. Another elevator, huh? Uh, you think this actually works? Dunno, only one way? Dunno, only one way to find out, though. Hey, someone's coming. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting to just end these right here. Clover and K. Oh boy. With Dio, Quark, and Alice tagging along, looks like. <laughs> Is this the same thing that I remember? What's going on here? We bumped into them a little while ago. Who'd have thought we'd bump into you too? Let me see the map. Wait, okay, so everyone just kind of. Wait, what's going on? Okay, you know what? This is where I'll end it. Okay. I don't- I thought there was, like, another someone died thing, but maybe not. Either way, um, yeah, I'll, uh, go ahead and leave it here. So that was- that whole conversation was just, hey, all three roots end up here, like the original. So I'm gonna leave this one here for now. Like, comment, subscribe if you'd like to, friends. I will see y'all in my next video or stream. I do intend to stream on Twitch. Same channel name as here on YouTube. But anyway, friendos, keep doing what you love. Be kind to people and yourself. Have wonderful freaking days, friends. Hell yeah.